Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. And today's BS video topic is that insulin makes you fat. Or does it? Let's get into the details. What's the claim here? Well, insulin signals fat storage. And thus, you should avoid insulin secreting foods, all of which at the top end are carbohydrates. And this is the carbohydrate insulin model of obesity. People eat too many carbs. Insulin is secreted en masse. Insulin is uh, lipogenic. It leads to the creation of fat stores. And it also removes carbohydrates from your bloodstream. And then you don't have any more, so you're hungry again, so you eat more carbs, and they just get stored as fat. And so on, the merry-go-round continues. Until you weigh 600 pounds, you have no idea what happened. All I ate is one apple, you tell yourself, that you sound a lot fatter when you say that. There is some theoretical support for the idea that this might be the case. Yes, insulin does in fact trigger lipogenesis. It does trigger the creation of fat. It absolutely does shuttle nutrients from the bloodstream into fat cells where they are used to build more fat molecules. The part that usually folks leave out is that insulin also shuttles nutrients into muscle cells and many other cells of your body. Does it also build muscle? Yes. We'll get to that in a bit. And insulin absolutely can, under some circumstances, cause so much of your blood glucose to be removed from the blood into the cells that you get a radical rebound hunger spike and it causes you to consume even more carbohydrate building that positive feedback loop to get you to 600 pounds. Now, that is precisely where the support for this idea ends and the theoretical problems actually begin. First, if you are not in a calorie surplus, that is eating more calories than you burn, it is very difficult, perhaps impossible, for insulin to create net increases in your body fat and body weight. Where would it get that stuff from? Insulin doesn't seem to reduce your physical activity levels, so if it can't tip the scales of thermogenic balance, I'm not really sure how it's supposed to build more net tissue. The only way to get to 600 pounds is to eat a lot of food, which insulin doesn't really itself have an effect on. Insulin in healthy people plays no favorites as to which cells it transports nutrients into. Another problem. So insulin is actually very anabolic towards muscle tissue. It helps muscle grow and it helps fat grow. It helps everything grow, but the key to that growth in the long term, with muscle and with fat, is a caloric surplus. So you gotta eat more food than your body needs in order to make insulin this very powerful mediator of actual gains. Now, if you say to yourself, look, carbs are very lipogenic, and the insulin that comes with them is part of the problem. Every time you eat carbohydrates, your body secretes insulin. The carbs cause fat gain, the insulin cause extra fat gain. The two of them combined are like the Batman and Robin of if Batman and Robin, instead of fighting crime, just made people fat. So you say to yourself, well, listen, I like the old 1960s Batman and Robin just fine, but I'm gonna eat more fat and fewer carbs. I'm even gonna low, low carb and I'm gonna have a, a lot of dietary fat and very little dietary carbohydrate to prevent the insulin and the carbs are being turned into fat. And then you think about that for about three seconds longer and you think, why would my body have to turn the carbs into fat? If it just got fat in the diet, it could take that fat and pretty much directly put it into fat cells and make me fat that way. And then you would answer that question in the affirmative. Like, yes, actually it would do that. So it turns out when people do low carbohydrate diets to try to reduce the impact of insulin and carbohydrates on adiposity and the creation on the lipogenesis creation of fat, they have absolutely succeeded only to replace that carbohydrate with fat in their diets. And now that fat directly goes into fat cells and just makes you fat, requiring no conversion, I might add. And it makes you just as fat to eat fats as carbs. As a matter of fact, by a small margin, fat is more lipogenic than carbohydrates. So the low carb diet where you eat lots of fats, that doesn't seem to work all that well. Now, those are the theoretical problems. What problems do we run into when trying to say insulin makes you fat 
in the real world? Well, a couple. But hold on a second. While I'm doing work on my computer, Windows suggests that I can explore Microsoft movies and TV, watching anime, horror, action, and more. And it even asks me if I want to launch it now or later. Microsoft, you know what I want more of? Pop-ups. Ah. In any case, Microsoft, you're great. Last time I talked smack about Bill Gates, I got a muscle cramp on this very channel, so I won't do that. All right, here we go. Observed problems. First, insulin usually doesn't raise hunger levels. Insulin spikes do that if you inject exogenous insulin. If you are producing endogenous insulin, which almost everyone who says that insulin causes fat is talking about endogenous, internally produced insulin, internally produced insulin seems to usually have a negative effect on hunger. It creates a feeling of fullness. It just doesn't reliably make you hungrier unless you get some really exotic conditions. So that whole idea of if insulin is high, you get hungry all the time just doesn't seem to be true. Second, we can test this hypothesis directly. The claim is that via the insulin-mediated pathways, high-carbohydrate diets, which make the secretion of lots of insulin a necessity, cause more fat gain. We could just go and test that out. Get 20 people to eat high-fat diets with low carbs, get 20 people to eat high-carb diets with low fats, and see who gets fatter after three months. It turns out there's basically no difference. The, all of the studies taken together, of which there have been dozens and dozens of studies conducted in various ways, different designs, different populations, it turns out that if you keep calories roughly the same, the amount of fat lost, gained, or maintained is also roughly the same, whether you eat a diet mostly of carbohydrates, mostly of fats, or anything in between. So it turns out that high insulin exposure versus low insulin exposure, high carb diets versus low carb diets, don't predictably lead to any differences in weight gain or fat gain. That just nukes that hypothesis right out of the water. I mean, you can speculate all you want about the mechanisms, but if the thing you are speculating is simply not true in practice, you got to take a step back and understand that you did something wrong. For example, if I can speculate that, you know, I can, uh, you know, beat up Tyson Fury in a boxing match because of all kinds of theoretical reasons, you know, I'm probably stronger than Tyson Fury. I'm probably younger than he is. You know, I'm spry. I'm real smart. It's a real, a really good idea to be smart in boxing. You can break where people go. And then I get in the ring and he knocks me the fuck out 10 times in a row and I do nothing about it 10 times in a row. You got to wonder, you might have made a mistake. And the ultimate test of my claim that I can beat up Tyson Fury is actually getting in the ring and putting them gloves on. So that's how science works. In study after study after study, all the studies taken together and counted separately shows that insulin and carbohydrates paired together simply do not cause more body fat gains than just good old-fashioned fats. Yikes. All right, so we can just throw that out. In addition, there is an idea that if foods cause a lot of insulin secretion, then they're going to cause a rebound in low carbohydrate presence in the blood and a crazy rebound hunger and then more insulin and more hunger and more, carbo more carbohydrates and then you get fat. That's an interesting idea. It could be true, but it misses an entire component, an entire signaling pathway, an entire hormonal axis in your body called the glucagon axis. And glucagon is a hormone that directly opposes insulin. If you have a lot of carbohydrates in your blood, insulin is secreted in order to take them and put them in the cells. If you have very little carbohydrate in the blood, glucagon tells the liver to secrete more carbohydrates into the blood to keep blood sugar normal. How do we know that this happens? Like 100 years of physiology. What about if we take high insulinergic foods, foods that secrete a ton of insulin, even for how much carbohydrate they have? Foods like yogurt and skim milk, for example. You would expect someone to eat yogurt, just sit around for half an hour, and then get hypoglycemic, get clammy and confused and hungry for carbs and sweaty, and then all of a sudden, they're passing out. But in reality, what happens is glucagon kicks in, and then the blood sugar stays perfectly normal, and there is no rebound hunger effect from eating a fucking container of yogurt. Can you imagine even saying that to someone? Like, yeah, we eat a lot of yogurt, so I'm starving. Said no one ever. What a preposterous bit of nonsense. Lastly, it's the glycemic index that's the problem, right? The glycemic index tells you how much a food raises blood sugar. And if it raises blood sugar a ton, and you're a relatively healthy person, even if not, 
It is going to raise insulin a ton. You got the carbs, you got the insulin. It's a huge spike, all the bad things. That's supposed to make you fat. Here's the problem with that. The most lipogenic foods, the foods that we know from study after study cause the most fat gain are not even high glycemic index foods. For the amount of food that you're eating, they don't even secrete that much insulin and absolutely do not do it rapidly. The appearance of carbohydrate in the bloodstream from those foods is slow and steady, like you would have with brown rice. But it sure as shit isn't brown rice that is making people fat. What is it? Pizza, ice cream, cookies, etc. They are the most lipogenic foods because they have two things going for them. One, they have a ton of calories for every bite. Two, they are delicious and you just keep wanting to eat them. And you do. And then you get fat. And you look in the mirror. And you begin to cry. And what works best for your tears? Your friends may judge you. Or shit, even your parents judge you. Your spouse just isn't looking at you the same way anymore. Mr. Cookie, he's never had anything against you. Give me a hug, he says. Put me in your mouth, he says. Now look, if anyone other than Mr. Cookie is saying put me in your mouth, you got to report the motherfuckers to the police. That aside, low glycemic index foods, all of them are. Pizza, ice cream, cookies, they're low GI foods. They do not secrete a ton of insulin. The carbohydrate insulin model is unable to describe why these foods are so lipogenic, but the model of, well, foods are tasty and you eat more of them and they have high calories and then you eat more of them and they have high calories and that's how you get fat is absolutely able to explain that. And that is the food palatability reward hypothesis by uh, Stéphane Guianet. And it just happens to be the truth as far as we can tell for now. I'd put more stock into that. All right. So how the hell, knowing all of this and knowing the BS behind it, is it such a common myth? I have a couple of ideas. One is because people need a scapegoat that allows them a way out. That allows them some convenient way to squiggle away from the imposing responsibility of actually eating well. I don't wanna to have to start measuring my portions. I don't wanna to have to start exerting self-control. I just wanna have zero fucking control and eat tons of carbs, blame the carbs, and then have zero control and eat tons of fats and still not lose weight and then maybe blame the fats. And the reality is that people get fat on junk foods, not dextrose powder or fruits. You never look at someone who's eating brown rice and apples and think, man, what an idiot. He's going to gain so much fat via the carbohydrate insulin model. That's nonsense. And you see someone eating cookies and french fries and taking the fries and di dipping them into cookie chunks. Ooh, cookie dough french fries. Do not take my idea. That's my idea. Then you probably think they might be getting fatter sooner or later. All that aside, any attempt to duck that reality to try to blame insulin and thus carbs is, as the great Arnold Schwarzenegger would inevitably say, bullshit. I'll see you guys next time.